I think what's really important in the face of injustice is just to show up. So what's been really meaningful for me in this process is that everybody needs to recognize how they can show up and understanding that not everybody's going to show up in the same way. Of course, the most public and the most publicized way are the rebellions that are happening throughout the world and, um, you know, taking to the streets and closing bridges, which is absolutely brilliant because that kind of demonstrative way that people show up is extremely important because it catches fire and it ignites people and it motivates people. Rihanna Taylor's life But not everybody can do that. I spent my first, you know, several years of adulthood and young adulthood doing that. And at this point in my life, that doesn't feel like it's, it, I can do that right now. So I'm going to find a way to show up. And the way that I found was to create a mural on the side of my house because I want to create something. I want to send a message that's long lasting and reaches as many people as possible. And because I don't have a public platform and I don't have a way to speak to a lot of people in general, like for example, have a radio show or um, be a known celebrity, I wanted to find a way to contribute to the fight. I wanted to find a beautiful way to contribute to it. And I think that's what we all need to do. And what's been really powerful in this process is that's exactly what people in my community are doing. Some people are showing up by donating money and other people are showing up by donating time. And then other people are showing up by donating equipment that they have access to and skills that they're donating. So it really is this reminder that it's a very small and beautiful world, right? And it's filled with beautiful, kind, and generous people. And we need to remember that because we outnumber them every day in every city, on every continent of this world. We outnumber them. And this mural has reminded me of that more than anything has reminded me of that in quite some time. Yay, welcome to Virtual Wednesdays. My name is Francesca D'Alessio and I am so honored and so excited to be joined here live in this Zoom room uh, with the incredible women who are creating the Say Her Name mural in West Oakland. Um, so welcome all of you. I'm just gonna do some quick introductions and then I just wanna pass you the mic and hear all the stories. <laughs> um, but first I wanna introduce Taylor Nicole Price who is the filmmaker behind this amazing project. We have Rachel Wolf Goldsmith, who is the lead artist, muralist, and creative director of Wolf Pack Murals. We have the incredible Erica Huggins. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you don't know Erica, she is an educator, one of the leading Black Panther Party members, a former political prisoner, a human rights advocate, wellness, health, and spiritual guru, a poet, a mentor, a radiant human being. I know I'm embarrassing you. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> and, and I need to introduce you. <laughs> Sorry, Erica, I had to. <laughs> uh, and, I, and, and of course, Jill Christina Vest, uh, who has been a proud member of West Oakland since 1986, and a homeowner, uh, and many, many more things. But in the context of this discussion, uh, this makes sense. Um, so I have so much gratitude and so much joy to be sitting here with you incredible people. So thank you so much. Um, and to start this conversation, I was thinking before we get to the mural, we should really lay down the framework of why we're here and recognize the importance and the impact of the Black Panther Party's community survival programs. Um, I really feel like Erica and the Panthers, you set a blueprint of what a better society could be. Um, and so I'm hoping you can talk, I know it's a loaded topic, I know we could talk about this for, for days, um, but do you think you could talk about how those programs came to be, the work that you were doing, um, and how it's impacting us now and in the future? Yeah, that is a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, good, it's loaded with goodness, right? Thank you for that question. Um, the Black Panther Party is often misunderstood 
And, you know, in history, there was some intention behind those misunderstandings, but maybe we'll get to that on another day. The Black Panther Party had 65 what we called community survival programs because we came to this understanding that people need to eat, they need to have clothing, they need to have housing, they need food and shelter and peace for their children, they need education and so on. Every, every point of the Black Panther Party's 10 point program is attached to one or more of those community survival programs. And so we created them because we knew that people's lives would be transformed enough, then the worries would be put aside so that they could support the revolutionary movement. So those programs were called, they were in the category called survival pending revolution. That's how we thought of it then, Fran and everybody, because we thought that the revolution would, you know, it would just unfold and everything would be different in our lifetime. Of course, we now know, and it wasn't long before we, the Black Panther Party knew as well, that revolution is a process that begins and continues. It does not end. It isn't a something. It's not an event. So those programs, however, are well remembered in community and were created from the people. We went to people and we said, what do you need? What do you want? And we will try to do our best to make it so. And so in New York, they said, well, we don't need, the breakfast program is nice, but we need winter boots and coats for our children. So there was a free shoe and clothing program in New York. In Chicago, they said, you know, we want to focus on the People's Free Medical Clinic. I'm just giving examples. In the South, it was um, lead paint. It, it was roaches and rats. It was everything. We had a free plumbing program, a free pest control program. We had adult literacy programs, seniors programs, teen programs. And then, of course, we had the Oakland Community School, which was the flagship of all of the programs because it was a model elementary for two and a half to 12 year olds. Each of the 65 programs, each, each and every one of them was replicable. And they have been replicated in places around the world, in places that I never would dream there would be a free food program or a people's free medical clinic. And often they were started by young people of color who'd never met one of us, never talked to one of us, had come across a battered and tattered Black Panther Party newspaper. So it really is um, an important question that you ask because what often happens is that people think of us in, a, in black leather jackets and berets and with guns for self-defense. But one of the greatest means for self-defense is to protect people by guaranteeing their health and ending hunger and taking care of them and being kind to them. As we used to say, serve the people, body and soul. Oh, thank you so much, Erica. Thank you. I mean, it's so relevant now, still, as ever. I mean, it's- Absolutely. Not one of the 10-point program, the points in the 10-point program can be checked off, not one of them, because it is a continual process. And that is because of structural inequity. It's not because there's some bad guy somewhere that's holding everybody hostage. It's that scaffolding. It's that in, it's institutional racism and other inequities that allow for it to continue. No one in the United States should be hungry, not one person. No one should be houseless, not one person. And we see the, we see the result of this institutional um, harm. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I could talk to you all day about how important those programs still are. Um, yeah. 
But uh, you know, I think we'll pivot the conversation. We have such limited time um, to Jill, Christina, and the mural project. Um, so as Erica has inspired all of us, um, I imagine part of your inspiration as well. Um, so if you want to talk about where did this idea come from, um, it is it is so layered and so important in so many different ways. Um, but I'd love to hear from you uh, where this idea came from. Yeah, I, I'm inspired every time I feel like I'm in the presence of Erica. So I get um, something new every time and I hear something new every time it resonates differently each time. So that's a, a blessing for me. Um, but the mural is going to address so many things that Sister Erica said about the survival programs and the 10 point program um, that it, it came out of, the idea came out of the rebellions that came about last summer with the murder of George Floyd and the silence around the murder of Breonna Taylor and just a feeling of loss and a feeling of um, helplessness and like just deeply rooted rage and grief and not knowing where to put it. And I figured out that the one thing that I needed was joy because I couldn't find it anywhere. All the news was negative, everything was so heavy. And when I started thinking about what would make me joyful, I started thinking about all the beautiful art that was going up throughout Oakland. Um, and then I realized it was gonna be temporary and so it wasn't gonna be there forever. But then I also was realizing that it was memorializing grief. So it was, it just kept going back and forth. And I was like, okay, now I need to figure out, I can bring myself joy by creating art or getting somebody to create it, but I wanted to memorialize something that made me happy. And it just kind of connected the dots and connected the dots when I started thinking about the Black Panthers and thinking about where I live, um, thinking about why I bought this house 20 years ago because it's the birthplace of the Black Panther Party. And then realizing the connection around the silence around Breonna Taylor and the Say Her Name movement. And then thinking, I'm like, but wait a minute, nobody ever talks about the women in the party and I've met them and I know them and they're amazing. And why isn't that anybody talking about them? And it just kind of all fell into place of that's what it's going to honor. And the same kind of concept of this invisibility around black women and our contribution um, and it just kind of snowballed from there, quite literally. <laughs> it's, it's all meant to be. I mean, the journey that you've been on, everything just sort of seems to be falling into place. It's Absolutely. So yeah. um, so how did you pull this team together? I mean, you have some um, theater Bay Area artists on your team. Right, right. Well, the first person I contacted was Erica, and I wanted to make sure um, to ask permission to get her blessing to make sure that the honorment felt appropriate and um, that my heart was in the right place and that it wasn't going to be something gauche or I don't know, I just needed to make sure that it was, that my expression was there. And Taylor actually heard about it, I'm not sure how, and reached out to me one day and said, my name is Taylor, I work at the Betty Ono Gallery, I heard about your mural and I just really wanna to talk to you and volunteer and help and do something. And we had an amazing conversation on Zoom one day and I found out you were a filmmaker and that you're from Oakland. And then I was like, hey, do you wanna lead the film team so we can document this whole thing? And as far as Rachel coming on, it started with um, an amazing artist, James Shields, who created a, um, a team of artists and also created the original designs and the original palettes around um, me talking to him and looking at these photographs from Stephen Shames and him interpreting what it was that I was saying and creating this palette. So Rachel's been on the team from the very beginning and just over time and over the months and over the incarnations of the mural, she eventually became the lead and designed the final um, imagery and is now implementing the mural. So be more perfect um yeah. you know and just rachel your style is so beautiful and so powerful on the house i mean the, you look at the faces and you feel emotion you feel the love in their eyes and the power 
Um, so, it, you know, it worked out so well. I think the timing was off or something that Rachel became the lead, but amen, right? <laughs> it's been wonderful. <laughs> and then Taylor, what has your process been in documenting? I mean, it's so important. And before there was anything to look at at the house, what were you documenting or what does that process look like? So a big part of this, um, my interest and passion for this project was preserving history, Bay Area history, Black history, because um, I had just moved back from college and, you know, coming back and forth, things had just been so drastically different each time I would come back. Um, and so, yeah, this was a good opportunity for us to like deep dive into the history here. So until like a few weeks ago, most of the early documentation was like landmarks throughout the city, um, specific landmarks throughout West Oakland. Um, a lot of a lot of B-roll images that we used um, in the unveiling the live stream on Sunday and some that we haven't used. Um, but that was really it, just get like a really firm sense of Oakland visually um, to really set the tone and the, the setting. Um, you know, we're getting um, audience questions as well. And so I just looked at it and they're wondering, you know, how important it is to document this moment in time. Um, so that's one of the questions I'm supposed to ask you, Taylor. Yeah, I think, I think it's incredibly important because it was so timely. I think um, that there was just so much destiny that collided to make this moment happen and for the team to fall into place as it did. Um, and it's been really important because there has been this like resurgence of, I feel like, um, a memory or recollection of the Black Panther Party and their legacy and their impact, you know, as we see with like Judas and the Messiah and just like, I, that's just something I've been noticing and Oakland is the birthplace of the Panthers, but I don't think it's known for that. It's not celebrated in the city for that. I didn't learn that growing up um, in school. So I think it's... Um, it's like we're in like a really powerful moment of like reclaiming our history, reclaiming narratives. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think it could be more timely. Absolutely, yeah. And, that, and the house, you know, it brings so much joy and it's so powerful. I mean, you really are, it's so many layers to this project, it's outstanding. Um, and you have over 200 names of women on the house, or, or you will, it's still in process. Um, how did you determine those names? What research did you do? Um, what names are up there? Yeah, if you could speak to that process a bit. Yeah, well, we've been collecting names on a Google Drive since this project started in June. Um, and Erica and I and a sister named Angela Ernest LeBlanc in Texas, um, who is a researcher and a historian and filmmaker, um, started this seat and we just started kind of asking out and Erica gave us a huge list and Angela already had a huge list and emails started going out and people were applying from, you know, the continent with names. People were applying from all over the United States with names and it grew and grew and grew and some of the same names were coming in and every once in a while a brand new name would come in and we've been trying to not only collect the names for the mural itself, but also collect as much information on these sisters and these comrades as we can, because it's not been collected before. So it's like Taylor saying this, this whole process has been to collect history that hasn't been collected before and document stories that have existed, but not been told and not been filmed and not been written down and to say women's names that did powerful and amazing and history changing things, but their names have never been said. And so that became a huge, huge part of this project to make sure that um, it's not just the names that we've always heard associated with the Panther Party. It's all of these other women that did all of the tasks that Erica listed and drove the vans and edited the newspaper and wrote the articles and did the sickle cell anemia testing and registered the voters and packed the grocery bags, like literally did everything. And I think it's very meaningful to be able to 
look somewhere or walk up to a wall and be able to speak that person's name into existence. So, yeah. So beautiful. And just painting their name, you know, it's just iconic. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I just have chills thinking about the house and, and the power of this project. It's outstanding. Um, so Rachel, a question just came in for you. Um, mm -hmm. How did you land on the final panels of the mural and the quote on the backside of the house? Uh, were there any specific images or artists that have inspired your designs? Um, and I guess yeah. I should speak to the quote on the back of the house too. Yeah, sorry. The quote isn't there yet, um, which is part of why we're asking for support to keep the project going. Um, that will be another installation. So right now we're focusing on the Ninth Street side of the house. And um, there's a Emery Douglas sunburst that is behind the three main characters on the large wall. And Emery Douglas was the artist for the Panther newspaper and um, as Jill has found out of a uh, great support to the women of the party. Um, so we wanted to bring his essence in um, kind of overarching the whole thing. And then Panther blue, uh, baby blue, really just a bold contrast between the brown of the skin and the blue in the background and keeping it simple enough so that all of the names read, I mean, with 250 names, you have to be very uh, selective about, you know, not making it too busy, right? And uh, um, let's see, we have Serve the People, Body and Soul on the upper right section of the house. Um, that, you know, is painted really large and really bold and kind of feels like it's uh, watching over the neighborhood and, um, you know, speaking to the streets. So, yeah. And then the characters are all from Stephen James photography. So bringing those to life, adding color. And we actually had somebody recognize one of the women in the mural uh, driving by. And he said, I think that's my aunt up there. And I was like, check out this picture. Is this her? And he said, yeah, that's her. So he was able to get in touch with her and ask what she wanted her protest sign to say, because I had a blank protest sign in her hand. So she returned the message um, he came back a couple days later and let me know. So that was a cool uh, connection there. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, that speaks volumes to your skill as a painter that someone can recognize the person. Right. Um, and then also that these are real people who did this great work, who stood up and were strong. And I mean, just to honor real people is so powerful. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, well, well done. What was the message for the protest sign? Uh, the message was, we've come too far to turn back now, all power to the people. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I can speak to the quote that's going to go on the back if you'd like. Please, yes, I would love you to. Right. So the, the, the link came from, because that kind of was born out of the Say Her Name movement and the invisibility of Black women, um, the Say Her Name movement was born from the, um, the death of Sandra Bland in Texas. And Sandra Bland, as a human, when she was alive, was very fierce and a clear revolutionary and spoke very um, boldly about her love and adoration for Black people and the freedom and liberation. And that's not really something that we know about her because we just kind of remember that she was one of the victims of police violence. So when I wanted to connect um, the joy and the power and the idea of not creating a mural about what has been done to us, but let's create a mural about what we can do for ourselves. And that's exactly what the Black Panther Party believed in. And it's also what Sandra Bland spoke of quite often. So the quote that's gonna go on the back is just, is just going to be her words and it faces an elementary school, which, is, which was poignant for me. And the quote is, hello, my beautiful kings and queens, know that somebody loves you, know that somebody sees you and know that somebody believes that you can do great things. Oh, that's stunning. Yeah. That, you know, Sandra Bland had a podcast and she always started it by saying, hello, my king. Exactly, kingdom. exactly. And she was yeah. very joyful. Um, same kind of thing, like same, the same vibe that I've wanted from the beginning is the, those expressions that you talk about on the women's faces that Rachel has captured so beautifully. It's like there's so often that black women are depicted 
you know, angry and yelling and, you know, all of these things. And that's like, but we're also all of these other things and the complexity of the woman needs to be, you know, conveyed. And as you said, you look up at these women and you smile and that's what's supposed to happen, so. Yeah, and, and all of that is, is depicted in the mural. Mm -hmm. Like the love, the strength, the anger, the resilience, the you know, all of it is there, the compassion, the it's it's just such a powerful piece. And I love that it's a 360 um all around the house too. I mean, it really is a, a, it has a force, one might say. Um, and what's very cool, I don't know if you want to talk about this street changing of names that happened recently, um, but this is very exciting news. And I, Eric, I don't know if you want to speak to that. You were here this morning as well. <laughs> well, it's, but it's your street, so. <laughs> your street. Yes, it, it's, yes. Yeah. So when the mural started and I had a couple of conversations with Frederica Newton, who um, was on the block, Huey P. Newton was felled right across the street from the mural on 9th Street, 1456 9th Street is where he was killed in 1986. And through conversations with her, um, I was reminded of a conversation that I've had with my neighbors before of wanting to possibly change the street to honor him and saying that this not honoring him because this is where he died, but honoring him because this is where he lived and this is where he changed the lives of a lot of people. And so we talked about that and she made the moves with the city and I got a bunch of signatures from all of my neighbors and everybody who signed on for it and it came to fruition this morning on his birthday on um, February 17th and so there was an event this morning and now the three block range from Mandela Parkway to Peralta has been commemoratively named Dr. Huey P. Newton Way. So the mural now is at the corner of Center Street and Dr. Huey P. Newton Way which is kind of pretty dope. Amazing. And it's so it's just, beautiful. I just got chills again. It's just, it's really surreal. It's uh, extraordinary. You know, and, and Taylor, you had mentioned earlier that, you know, growing up, uh, the Panther, you, you didn't learn about the, the birthplace of the Panthers. And I feel like it's changing. I feel like now that Huey P. Newton has a street, the mural is going up, you know, hopefully, you know, ed educators start talking more about the Panthers and the work and raising kids understanding the power of, of our heroes. Um, I, you know, I think I had told you, Erica, when I was in first grade, I was taught the Panthers were heroes because they saved families and they saved babies. And that was my first grade teacher taught us. So I think I, when I met you, Erica, I was like crying. <laughs> because my whole life, you've been a hero in, in my world. Um, so hopefully, you know, youngsters growing up in Oakland start getting that education as well, because that is the home base. Um, so yeah, it couldn't be more important. So I, I, I'm gonna run out of time. I could talk all day. Um, so before we get to some audience questions, I just want to know how do we support you? So how can we support the mural? How do we support the project? Um, please plug every website, plug everything. Uh, let folks know how we can help, help out and support. Right, well, the website is wbppmural.com. And um, if you log on from a, from a laptop, really the main thing to go to that website is to see these photographs by Stephen Shames that are just stunningly beautiful. And I had never seen them before, which is what became such a beautiful part of this process was to try to get these photographs and many, in as front as many people as possible. Um, and from that website, there is um, t-shirts and hoodies and there's a beautiful educational workbook that was graphic designed by James Shields, one of the artists on the program, exactly on the, on the project. <laughs> Product placement, um, but it's such a beautiful book. So everybody yes, should get a absolutely. copy. Absolutely. And yeah. you know, it's, it's been a, a larger project than we thought. There's been an amazing level of support already of community funding and grant funding. And you know, we still need to finish the back and we need to build a protective fence to make sure that you know, the sidewalk is clear and things like that. So absolutely any way that anybody can support from $5 to whatever, we are very grateful and very blessed to have been supported so far. But it's wbppmural.com and through donation or any purchase from the swag, it all goes to the mural. 
It's wonderful. And you're also selling sweatshirts too, just a quick plug. Um, mm -hmm. you, you can look great and support a great cause. Yeah, so and the, the, the t-shirts, we've created um, t-shirts with a very special process using Stephen Shames photographs. So they're um, works of art as far as I'm concerned and they're just gorgeously made and they're printed one by one, so on demand and a special process that makes the photograph just look amazing um, when you wear it, so. And his photographs are just stunning. I mean, I just wanna send some love his way because he. someone asked him as a photographer, were you a fly on the wall? And he got so offended. He said, no, I was in the movement. I was part of it. I was out there. And that's why his photos are so good. I mean, you can just see he was in it. He cared, he was part of it. Um, and it comes and Taylor, you can speak to that because Taylor, we did an interview with him and he did mention that, um, and I don't know if you want to say more, he talked about why he had so many pictures of the women and the, that he was a part of it, he wasn't a fly. Yeah, yeah, he did say that verbatim. Yeah, he spoke about how welcoming the Panthers were and that he just felt it was his mission to be the artist of the movement, um, which is, it's, it's, I feel like something in the moment that it doesn't seem like imperative, but you know, history years later it's like some of the best documentation that we have of the panthers and what they were doing so yeah his art is incredible incredible i know i mean everyone should go to the website and just look at those photos um they're just stunning um so my wonderful team is saying before i move to audience questions make sure i ask how we can also support taylor and rachel's work and as well as erica so how do we support you taylor and then we'll go to rachel and, and you erica as well um you can support my work by supporting the mural <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah all the information jill said okay awesome and and rachel how do we support wolfpack murals Hmm. Um, well, you can check out my work. You can support financially. Always. You can hire me to bring a wonderful team of muralists to paint something. Um, you can donate to this project and otherwise, uh, I'm just open to all sorts of collaborations and community building. Um, so creating mutually supportive systems. Awesome. Yay. Um, and Erica, you're always doing amazing things. How do we find you? How do we, you're always um, everywhere giving talks and helping everybody. How do we support your amazing work? Oh, I think you're muted. It's technology. One thing I want to say, and it isn't, it's, you can't monetize this but how um, wealthy we become when we do our inner work. What am I talking about? I'm speaking about um, uh, not waiting for someone else to transform our understanding of who women are and how to be caring of them, how to care for ourselves how to care for children, how to care for our communities. It's not a cerebral exercise. It's love in action. And that is how people can support what I'm doing because what I do is facilitate conversations about racial equity with all kinds of organizations, companies, large, medium, and small. In a practical way though, people can follow me on Facebook or Instagram and um, on Instagram, Erica Dash Huggins. So I, I just want to impress upon people that it isn't just a few of us. I am one of many, and I keep saying that. And I borrowed that from Angela Davis, who says that about herself. We didn't come for fame, and we certainly didn't come to be infamous, although we were. We came because our hearts were telling us we can't sit by and wait for someone else. There is no someone else. And as June Jordan says, we are the ones we have been waiting for. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we can all support you by loving actions through living better lives. <laughs> mm -hmm.
be, it being seeing the people and um, caring about the people who are right there rather than trying to fix it in our heads. Right, right. And that's what the community survival programs are an example of. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. I love it. Um, all right, so audience questions. They've been coming in. <laughs> Here is our first one. Um, what do you want children to understand about themselves when they see this mural? <laughs> well, if I can get through this without crying, is that, <laughs> is that actually was um, just a huge, huge base of why I'm doing this is because I want, um, I want the mural to allow little girls and little boys and little everybody, big and small, to just be able to look up and know that they come from something great, know that they can be something great, um, know that someone great is watching over them and is fighting for them and ho always has been and always will be. Um, it's always a, a, it's a difficulty living these days. Things are heavy, things are burdensome, things can be very dark and um, challenging. And again, that's why I wanted this mural to bring joy because I needed it in my life. And I figured if I needed it in my life, my whole community could prob probably benefit it from well as well. And so, as I said from the beginning with Erica, like that you know, if one little girl stands taller and just a little bit of her shoulders go back and her neck is taller, she's staring up at these 30 foot tall women that look like her or look like her mother or look like her neighbor, then the mural is doing what it's supposed to do. And Rachel and I have witnessed it on a daily basis already. You know, the, the cars stopping and the smiles that just break out. And there was a 96 year old woman that came by yesterday and was just pure joy. She was just, you know, I'm gonna take a picture of you and I'm gonna, and it was exactly what it's supposed to happen is um, to smile and to know that you're great and know that you have the right to be here and you have the right to take up space and that there's a permanence to us. This mural is permanent. It's not going anywhere. And it's the same thing for me and my community. We're permanent, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Wonderful, yes. I know I'm gonna cry here and you say that. It's so beautiful. Um, all right, the next question is, what is the future of this mural? Are there future murals in the works? I, I'm assuming other than the, this one. Um, and we need more public art reflecting and honoring the community. Um, so I guess there's two questions and a statement there. So what is the future of this mural and are there other murals in the works? I can speak to that as well. That it, Hopefully the, the future is what the community will decide and what the wider public is going to decide. It's definitely a public art piece. My ownership ends at the property line. So whatever it becomes is what's it going to, you know, people are asking, can they shoot a video in front of it? And, you know, we're talking about, you know, classrooms coming to tour and we're going to activate it with augmented reality so that you can point your phone and learn something about the women from the Panther Party. Um, you know, the coloring book activity book is going to be educational. Really, it's, it's like Taylor spoke to at the beginning. It's revitalizing this conversation about this powerful group of revolutionaries that were born here, but you don't really ever hear about them. You don't really see monuments to them. So I'm hoping that this becomes a destination and I hope it becomes a, a constant point of conversation to where every day somebody learns something new the way that we have on this project. I've learned an incredible amount of information about the women of the Panther Party and hopefully that will go on into infinity. And it's a living mural like we talked about that you know, if more names need to be added, more names will be added, nobody will be left out just because a year has gone by. So it's a definitely a fluid process. That's so beautiful. And it's real people. You know, I, I can't emphasize that enough. You know, how beautiful. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. Is there anything that we're missing? Anything you would like to say before we close out uh, this program? Anything I forgot to ask or should have asked? <laughs> All right. Well, thank
thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I love you all so much. I can't thank you enough for spending this half hour, hour with us. Um, and we're gonna watch a time lapse now of the, um, of the, so it's still in process. Oh, and actually, wait, before we go, I wanted to ask you about February 14th, the big event. So the, <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. So before I let you go, um, can you just talk about the live stream and, and we'll direct people to it so that people can watch it now that it's been archived and recorded on YouTube. But yeah, on, on um, February 14th, Valentine's Day, you had a big live event celebrating the mural. Yeah, you did. It was kind of like a soft opening for the mural. Um, because it is still in process. And like we said, we're gonna watch a time lapse of it starting until where we are today. Um, and on Friday, it was amazing. We, the live stream, you can, it's on YouTube. You can do live stream Women of the Black Panther Party mural. Um, but we had you know, quite a few people turn out even though COVID, we really wanted it to be um, COVID safe. But we had, you know, Rachel was putting names on the walls and creating this beautiful woman and it was really quite spectacular and something to see. And we're gonna be creating more documentation. Taylor's working on it and we're all working on it. So there'll be something a little bit more packaged in the next month or so. Um, and when the mural's done, hopefully COVID will be gone and we'll have a serve the people block party. And, re and you know, reboot all of these um, survival programs. So also on, on Sunday, we had an amazing food drive on sun Saturday with um, East Oakland Collective and Gold Beams and Oakland came through in a tremendous way. Just so many food donations, it was amazing. And we reprinted the original um, People's Free Food Program brown paper bags. Oh. And we packed and gave out nearly 300 overflowing bags of groceries. Um, and we had over 200 chickens donated fresh whole chickens. Um, and we get, we filled the free refrigerators throughout Oakland. We fed encampments throughout Oakland, the houseless people. Um, families came up to the mural throughout the entire day on Sunday and picked up grab, you know, bags of groceries. And it was really emotional. And there's definitely, um, uh, one brother said to me yesterday as I was giving out a bag that, you know, when you feed people, you solidify their mental fortitude is what this, you know, it was, and he was houseless and I, I just stopped the car and saw him and, and it was just such a profound thing to say because yeah, when you're hungry, it's hard to think, it's hard to function. And yeah, so we, I think we did, we did our part to fortify people's mental fortitude on Sunday. It was a beautiful event. Oh, beautiful. how wonderful. Yeah, and we'll share the links. I mean, everybody should should watch and, and be there in spirit, absolutely. Because there were wonderful speeches and I mean, it's just a joyful event that everyone needs these days. So thank you for all you do. I mean, it couldn't be more important for so many different reasons. Um, so th thank you, thank you again <laughs> for joining us tonight. Um, I, I couldn't love you more and keep up the good work. I look forward to working with you in the future um, you know, and all this great work that you're doing. So keep it up. Um, and I'm not sure if we have some technical difficulties but we're hoping to go out tonight with a time-lapse. Um, so hopefully we can pull it off behind the scenes. I'm not quite sure, but if not, we'll share the link. Um, but if you are in West Oakland, please check out the house. The address, one more time, is Dr. Huey P. Newton Lane, the street, Way, Drive, Way. Way. <laughs> and, and Center, did you say? Yeah, it's like two blocks up from the West Oakland BART station, right on the corner. You can't miss it. Awesome. So yes, please check out and support the project at the website is womenofbpp.org. WBPPmural.org dot com wbppmural.com thank you thank you so much um all right so we're gonna go out with a time lapse of the project but thank you so much for taking the time tonight and uh i'll, I'll talk to you soon we'll see you soon absolutely thank, thank you friend thank, thank you so much. thank you everyone.